The, the National Industrial Court has held that it is legal to withhold salaries of striking members of the Academic Staff Union of Universities during the period which the strike lasted. Justice Benedict Kangping uh, held that in line with Section 43, Subsection 1A of the Trade Union Act, members of ASU who participated in the eighth month long strike are not entitled to salaries. Although employers and workers can enter an agreement for which the workers will be paid during the period of the strike, uh, when such agreement was not made, no worker is expected to get paid. Now, the court also held that the federal government cannot force ASU to accept payments through IPPIS so long as they conform to their budgetary allocation. It adds the federal government was wrong to have imposed IPPIS on ASU. The court also held that in line with Section 18 of the Trade Dispute Act, no employer shall embark on lockout and no worker shall embark on an industrial action when trade dispute is apprehended and a reconcilia reconciliation ongoing. Now, Section 43, subsection 2 of the Trade Dispute Act, which gives sole powers to the minister to determine if there have been a lockout by an employer, the court notes, falls contrary to Section 6 of the Constitution. Well, we have our correspondent, Celestina Area, to uh, help us better understand some of the rulings from the election, presidential election petitions court as well as the National Industrial Court. Celestina, help us uh, perhaps uh, uh, understand better what uh, the election petitions uh, court is saying with regards to the APM, the, the, the case brought before it. Uh, is it that the APM did not have uh, the certified true copies uh, while coming to the courts today, such that is seeking adjournment of uh, the matter? Well, Veronica, on the 26th of May, the Supreme Court delivered judgment on the issue of double nomination brought against this, now the vice president concerning it was brought by the PDP saying it had double nomination. The issue was decided by the APS court and found out that there was no case of double nomination. But today, the presidential election petitions court resumed sitting after uh, having its pre-hearing session that when the court adjourned today to commence proper hearing for the petitioners being the Labour Party, the PDP, and the APM to open their defence debate. So uh, when the case of the APM was called or cancelled to the president, he told the court that the APM's only grounds of filing that petition has been decided by a court of superior record, which is the Supreme Court. The APM's case was that of placeholder. They had alleged or argued that there's no such thing as a placeholder in our constitution or in our laws, that the manner at which the vice president, as at that time elect, was selected by the president elect as then was, was on law to law, that uh, there's no such thing as a placeholder that Kebri Masai was used as a placeholder for Kasim Shetima. So the Supreme Court's issue was on double nomination as to the fact that uh, Kasim Shetima, at that time, was running for senator and also got nominated to be the vice president. But what other than told the tribunal, the tribunal today that it is the same issue and same matter. Although the APM did not quite agree, they said that they haven't gotten a copy of the, of the document, that they really need to see the document to look at the issues, if it's similar to their own issue, then before they will know how to proceed with their case. But let's also bear in mind that if they find out that that issue is similar and the Supreme Court has already decided on it, I believe they will be inclined to withdraw it. Otherwise, they will still want to proceed or right. uh, pursue their case as they so please. Now, moving over to the National Industrial Court, right. which today has delivered judgment mm. and has also said that uh, no work, no pay in terms of ASU members who participated in the long strike that started from February 14th up to when it was called off. I remember that that strike was called off by, by the court because ASU and the federal government were having negotiations, they were having meetings. The issue as to raise what has to do with the uh, uh, salary increments, uh, a monument and the use of UTAS against the federal government IPPIS. But at this very industrial court today, before now, the court has 
given ruling in an interlocutory application filed by the federal government. Ordering ASU to return to the classroom, otherwise they wouldn't have. But ASU, as at that time, were very upset that uh, they were having negotiations. The federal government came to the industrial court. But today, the industrial court found out that it is legal for the federal government not to pay ASU for the period at which they went on strike. And the court backed that up with section 43, subsection 1 of the Trade Dispute Act. And also looking at the ILO Convention, and that is number 87, and other applicable jurisdictions that the federal government can, should not pay ASU and is legally binding. And the court also made reference to the fact that payment can be made if the employer and the workers had an agreement that, okay, during the period that which we would go on strike, we would have, we would be paid, you would be paid. Right. But if such agreement was not made, no payment should be made. Mm. I'm wondering the, the reactions we will be getting from ASU with regards to this judgment coming from the National Industrial Court. Well, we must thank you, Judiciary Correspondent Celestina Area, for bringing us uh, up to speed.